Do you guys, have you installed your own video capture software for doing assignment three? I, no, I have no idea how to do this. Okay. Okay, don't right. worry. I, I, I saved the, the video. I, I have an app and I, I start to record it right now. Uh, awesome. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think the first we need to do is do the feedback to you and we make the discussion and that's it. But I, I think it's a, a small feedback and that's it because the video, we need to make a video for five minutes only and I no think, longer than five minutes. Yeah, so the assignment said, if I understood it correctly, is we're each supposed to upload five minutes of video in which we are giving feedback, I think. Yeah, we need to discuss the feedback that you give me for my video, and uh, and that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who we'll start? <laughs> I can. I can. What? Go ahead. Okay, so um, I can start with Claudia. Mm -hmm. Claudia, great, great energy in that classroom. By the way, I loved it. Um, one thing that I like, the features that I think stood out to me was the routines that you have for the kids to listen. And I know it's a language immersion class, so mm -hmm. it's really helpful that you continue those routines. So that was great to see. You did the countdowns to get them quiet. You did the clapping, um, you know, those, those uh, for your transitions as well. It was really great. Um, I can see that you're limited to your resources. So, because um, one thing that would have been nice is sometimes when you project, if you have the whiteboard underneath, mm -hmm. um, you're able to write on there. Because I noticed on the side, you started writing stuff on the side. Uh -huh. And thinking of language learners, it might be helpful for them to see the visual. Uh -huh, yeah. Um, noticed underneath you had the next, um, uh, what do you call it, lesson materials anyway. And uh -huh. they were excited about that. Like, it was so cute. There was one girl that just was like, oh, look at that drawing. It was just, she was so excited. Um <laughs> So I like the modeling. I like the transition you modeled uh, when you were doing the colors and mm -hmm. then uh, giving that direct instruction so the kids know and then having them do it. So mm -hmm. that was good to see. And it was kind of like in phases. So that was, that was fabulous. Okay. Thank you. And is um, Emily? Um, yeah, I agree with a lot of that, actually. Um, I also really liked um, the transitions and the way you use the counting vocabulary uh, at, for the transitions, you were reinforcing all the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I also, I thought the pacing of the lesson was really nice. The alternating between you kind of a leading a discussion, which gave them the chance to practice the vocabulary and for you to check their understanding with them doing the hands-on activities to get them really engaged. Mm -hmm. I thought that worked really well. Um, and uh, it was a nice blend of the art objectives and the language objectives. Mm -hmm. They kind of worked seamlessly together, which I thought was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, the only uh, one thing that I was wondering, uh, that I was wondering if you'd considered uh, uh, when you do want to bring the whole class's attention back together, yeah. Yeah. Um, it might be nice if you had an audio cue that wasn't just your voice having to be louder than them. <laughs> um, right, like a yeah. chime. Um, if you are using Class Dojo, I noticed you were doing Dojo points. Mm -hmm. And if you actually, if you actually have a a tablet or a phone or something that you're running Dojo on and maybe recording points in the moment, I think it also has like sound timer things that you can do mm -hmm. um, that you might use that for. I have a chime in my classroom that works. You can also do a a, a call and response, right? Something like the one, two, three, eyes on me, one, two, mm -hmm. eyes on you. But of course, you probably have to rework mm -hmm. it into Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, like that. I would try to do something different because when I start, I do pam, para, pam, pam, and they need to respond pam, pam. But I start right. and <laughs> they don't work the first classes, and I, uh, I change my strategy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to sometimes to engage all the kids and especially if you, my pacing is too long, I need to do the things very, very fast to try to engage everybody because if I, my pacing is too long, I lose my, I lose the kids. It's, Can I, I make have, a suggestion? 
Um, you know how you have your popsicle sticks? Yes, I use. And you, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I liked how you pull them out. And I was waiting to see if you were going to keep them. Because uh -huh. sometimes what's great is that you know which kids participated by uh -huh. holding names. So I was wondering when throughout the lesson if you were going to go back to them. Mm -hmm. So some if you really want to make sure you're engaging every single student, uh -huh. that would be a way for you to know if you, even if it's another transition and you're doing another uh, part of your lesson, if you keep those popsicle sticks, mm -hmm. kids know that they're going to have to participate in some way or another during that time. Mm -hmm. So if that is an objective that you have, you could actually keep those popsicle sticks and know that if you exhausted all of them, that every single kid participated. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, um, one other thing I just wanted to make a note of. I put it in my written observation, but I just want to mention it because I really liked it. Um, it was a really nice example of that, um, um, making sure every kid has the experience of being right. Mm -hmm. So when you have that one kid who clearly did not have the Spanish, or who's new to your class or mm -hmm. what, you were like, that's okay, here are the words, hear how they say, just say them with me, mm -hmm. and still get that experience of saying the things like everybody else. I thought that was a really nice yeah. little moment. And sometimes the kids uh, don't want to participate for this reason, because they feel child, that they don't say the, the right words, and I always say, you can say in English, I would tell you how you do you need to do in Spanish. Yeah, because... <laughs> It's, it's hard, I understand. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, that was okay. So I think a great lesson. Thank you. Well, uh, I will start with Emily. Emily, uh, your for you, your feedback is awesome. I see everybody engaged in the classroom and everybody listen to you. And I'm very, uh, I'm very jealous of you. You have only eight kids. <laughs> yeah, and but uh, I see everybody uh, follow you. Only the thing is, uh, I think your pacing is a little long. And I see one of the students start to draw. And <laughs> but uh, I think it's something that I do sometimes. And my pacing is too long, and I see all the kids try to uh, the students try and talk with the other kids, but uh, it's part to 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 learn, no. And I think uh, I like the game. Everybody plays the game. Everybody has turns, and the participation was awesome. I see when everybody when the in the brainstorm, everybody participate, write the hands, and and this is work. This works when you uh, when you put uh, partners to talking and the kids start. They have idea to have to say is the teacher us. They they have the idea in the in in the mind, no. Thank you. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Uh, when I lose them is when uh, when I talk too much. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I need to like just I I have a tendency I digress. I just wander off to the topics that are related that I think are interesting, you know, and they don't really mind that. So sometimes they'll encourage me to keep going off topic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for that observation. That's something I'm trying to work on. Yeah, and Emily, I think you were fine. I think a lot of times when you're um, reflecting as you go, you probably think you're overthinking it and, and it was fine. Um, one of the suggestions that I would make is you've got those two boards. Um, so I would, I would, uh, challenge you to just take advantage of it. Um, I, I felt though that because it was a filmed, um, observation, it was almost like you were, cause you didn't, it seemed unnatural for you to kind of stay there. I felt like you are the type that moves and it's almost like you were thinking, I'm not going to move because I've got, I've got a film. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sensitive to that. I know that you probably do go around and listen to what they're saying, um, but like with the second board, it would be great if you had the number line drawn or even had a piece of tape maybe, and then get the kids to get up and do it. Um, so that way they feel like they've, that, that's a great way for you to see the feedback right away that they understand it. Because I think when you ask some questions, you had to go back and when you were looking at the consumable, you were quite, kind of like, oh yeah, don't do it this way. Oh yeah, don't. And so if you saw it on the board, it kind of models to the rest of the kids how to do that so I, I felt that that would that would have helped um, I'm trying to think there was another um, 
of them. Oh, the think pair share. Um, one thing that's helpful is if you ask them within their groups, what is one thing that they heard that they felt was um, helpful or, or meaningful? So it's not necessarily that person who's still giving what they shared. It's the listening um, exercise. And so sometimes that is helpful. So when you're doing the Venn diagram, you know, you could say, what did your partner say that you thought, you know, was, was great for this point? And so when they do that, they, they're listening to each other. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. Those are two really good ideas. Thanks. Okay. Um, my video, I know full disclosure, my video is four minutes. I don't know why. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I'm happy to hear what you got to say. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, so that was, it was kind of funny. I was like, well, I, you know, it was kind of fun four minutes. Um, but I was, so one thing was I noticed in, uh, in your self-reflection, you had said you really enjoyed going over the learning standard and the objectives with them. And I was like, oh, I wish I'd gotten to see that part uh, on the video because that would have been pretty cool. Um, I really liked uh, that your lesson plan involved that sort of flipped classroom where they would have looked up the story of Mary Shelley on their own the night before because uh, the story, story is so wonderfully scandalous, but it just, it doesn't, it carries so much more fun when they find that for themselves and they feel like they're being all naughty finding the story as opposed to like you bringing up something kind of uncomfortable. So I think the idea of doing that in a flipped way is really a really good one. And it was, you know, it's too bad you couldn't get your kids to do it. But, you know, you, you probably had trouble getting just to sit, getting them to sit down for 20 minutes so you could do the lesson. Uh, it was. I was fortunate because they were great participants. Um, I do have the other video, so I will. I will have that uploaded. It's still uploading now. Um, but yeah, because they unpacked the standards, and then I think the video that I had uploaded was the part where I'm just kind of running through it with the hypothetical. Um, but uh, one thing I do have to say, I'm very fortunate that they do. They're used to a one-to-one. Uh, lesson, uh, Celine, who was the other girl, is not, and I could tell the difference. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things, too, to keep in mind, and I guess I will when I have students, that not everybody is um, used to it yet. When we get new students, they're not used to um, getting online and looking at things and, and so forth. Okay, and for me, I, would, uh, I know, uh, I can see you know the story and I, I, I like how you uh, connect your, the anecdotes with, uh, with the story, no? And, and I would like to see, see you in a, in a classroom, how to interact you with, your, with, your, with the students. I know I understand it's so, it's so hard sometimes. And sometimes when I need to do the, my homework, I say, okay, I can invite all my all my my son's friends to do the class but I will and uh, and only and my recommendation is maybe you need to do one um uh one small uh part is uh powerful is um uh one small uh, one resume about the the story and they can read before and they they can en engage with uh with the story and and say okay I, I, I understand and what the story it, uh goes and because uh sometimes uh I see one of the students that you say may a little lo loss and one only one is talking and talking and but uh, it's only is uh try to do again it. But uh, it's only, I think it's only my recommendation. It's a summary for the students, read before, and that's it. But uh, I yeah, think, that's awesome. uh -huh. okay. I like your, uh, your interaction with the students. And I, and I re sometimes when I need to talk about, for example, I talk about uh, death of the, the book of the dead with my students for e Egypt. And all the students sometimes is, is, some words or things that I need to explain, like, oh my gosh, how to say this? <laughs> but uh, I could like have to manage the, this concept and everything for, for the students, yeah. It's funny, it's funny you mentioned that because I've done Star Letter before, I've done the principal with kids, and I have no problem with my kids. 
Uh-huh. And, and I caught myself because I'm thinking, you know, this is the lover, and I didn't want to say that. And you can see all of a sudden I had not pop that through. And I'm kind of looking at him, the girl both got giddy because I'm saying that this is a boyfriend that he's married and <laughs> they're having an yeah. affair. But it's funny you say that because I think that that's, that's important. It's important to think about um, <laughs> the audience when you're talking. Yeah. And it's never dawned on me because I've never taught my own child. So um, it's funny that I got more conservative uh, minded with my own child versus what I would do in the classroom. That was, that was a funny catch. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think. I do have the other videos. Um, I feel I feel really bad. I have the videos where we did a read aloud together, and actually one of the reflections I had is that it took longer than expected, of course, because mm-hmm. they had a lot of vocabulary that they could not, um, and two because they don't really they're not really using the text. And I have you know I have my daughter and her cousin, so um, and they're both in different age age groups. Um, my daughter's in in tenth grade and in seniors and. So that was a challenge, but um, we did get to do the read aloud uh, to the kids. Okay, perfect. Well, I think it's everything we need to do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was. I can send you the uh, the video if you want it, and I I will post right now. Okay. 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 Well, How the rate we had on the submission? So I did add on there our like breakdown of the. Google Docs, in case you want to add the link there, <coughs> the races, everything. So if you see what I put in there, then just add it to the top, so that way, that means it probably all stays. If not, then we probably have our own individual submission. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, have a Bye. good week. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Hey, Bye. Bye.